How did you get him so quickly? A medical team heard the shell coming in. Apparently, he did too. Chest and belly practically unmarked. Curious how they always double up in the fetal position. What's curious about it? They're trying to protect their genitals. Well, this young man, unfortunately, succeeded. Any identification? No, sir. Then we'll assume he's ours. I mean to take personal charge of this case until repairs are completed. That could be rather a long time, Colonel Tillery. Wouldn't you say, Captain, that it's worth a year of any doctor's life to observe a case like this? You never know what has happened to him. The one part of his brain that has escaped damage is the medulla oblongata. It is only because of this that his heart, vasomotor, and respiratory centers still function. In short, that he lives. Identified casualty number 47. Post operational orders, Colonel M.F. Tillery, U.S. Army Medical Corps. Although the cerebellum still permits limited physical movement, such movement signifies nothing. If bodily actions become violent or persistently repetitive, it must be treated as reflexive muscular spasms, which is to say, by sedation. Cerebrum has suffered massive and irreparable damage. Had I not been sure of this, I would not have permitted him to live. There is no justification for his continued existence unless we learn from him how to help others. Care for him as gently as if he knew what you were doing and would feel the pain if you did it badly. Attending personnel will remember that good medical care forbids emotional involvement with the patient. Avoid such involvement by remembering that it is impossible for a decerebrated individual to experience pain, pleasure, memory, dreams, or thought of any kind. It follows, therefore, that this young man will be as unfeeling, as unthinking as the dead until the day he joins them. It's dark in here. I shouldn't have turned the lights out. Your old man will be sore. Oh, Mike won't care. He loves me. Only, could I just ask you one thing? Hmm? Why'd you have to volunteer? Only six months from the draft. Anyhow, Pinky and Larry have already gone. I could have been exempt because of your sisters. My mother's got a job. Besides, when the country needs you, you've got to go. You should go. I don't think anybody should go. They'll kill you. Oh, I could get killed at the bakery, too, or crossing the street. I can take care of myself. Don't worry. Lots of people get killed who don't think they'll be. Lots of people come back, too, most of them. 
the rest of them, Joe. They never come back. Oh, if anything ever happened to you, I'd just die. Oh, you only say that. I love you. I do love you. sitting in the back seat of a flipper. Now get up, both of you. Get up like decent people. Come on, get up. But he's going away in the morning. I know, I know, I know. Get in the bedroom. Both of you. I ain't much. 25 years in the coal mines carrying an IWW card. Now what am I? Goddamn railroad bull, that's what. Well, anyhow. Go on in there with her. She's scared. Oh, God, oh, go on in. Yes, sir. Put your arms around her. You know yes, how sir. to treat her, don't you? Yes, sir. Uh, she isn't a whore. You know that, don't you? Yes, sir. Uh, go to bed, son. Yes, sir. Son. I see you. Nice room. Mike fixed it up for my graduation. Picture's crooked, though. It was my mother's. Why don't you take your shoes off? Okay. Joe. Yeah? Could you turn your back? Why? I have to get out of bed. No. I want to see you. I won't let you see me. Would you get me my robe? Sure. It's on the closet door. It's red. Okay. Why'd you do that? Hot night. Here it is. Bring it closer, uh -uh. Sully. Reach for it. Oh, here. I'll help you. Oops. Let's get it through here. There. There you go. We should have flowers. Hmm? Sure. <laughs> if you really want to see me. Oh, but if you don't want me to, I don't want to either.
Fair's fair. Okay. It's nice like this, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Have you ever been this way with anyone else? Not with anyone I loved. I'm glad. Have you? You shouldn't ask that. <laughs> Why not? Because I'm a lady. <laughs> You're a mick. No, I've never been this way with anyone else before. I know. But you couldn't have known, not really. Joe, I don't want you to go. I want you to run away. You don't want me to see Paris, France. That's all. Don't go, Joe. Please don't go. Run away. Where to a ship rides? Anywhere. I'll hide you, honestly. <laughs> Want me to be a slacker, huh? Yes. Oh, they'll kill you, Joe. I know they will. In the words of that great patriot, Theodore Roosevelt. Love you, Joe. Hold me closer. Put both your arms around me. Both of them. Say is, dear God, don't make him go away. Don't let him be killed. Turn the lights on. It's dark in here. It's dark and still. And I, I can feel. 
feel the blood pumping through my veins. But I can't hear the pulse in my ears. When you can't hear your own pulse, you're deaf. You're deaf, Joe. I'm deaf. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just dreaming. Maybe. Oh, Jesus Christ, I hurt! <laughs> I can feel the sweat pouring out of my skin. Hot, wet skin that's all covered up with, with bandages. Even my head. I sure must have caught a big one. No. Telephones in the middle of the night are bad luck. Don't let anybody answer it, Father. What's this? Footsteps. I can feel their vibrations. What are they doing? Any evidence of hypostasis while I was breathing? None thus far. They're looking at something. Trachea too clear? A hand on my chest. He's breathing well. No more oxygen unless an emergency develops. I don't understand that. Cannula for intravenous feeding. Good. My face. Massive Is something wrong with my face? Necessary here. Colostomy good. Cystotomy functioning. Well. Very good. What next? Is the ambulance ready? Yes, sir. Very well. Bring him along. Where are you taking him, sir? Occupation Forces Base Hospital Number 3 at Johnville, St. Clure. All right. Let's move it. Davis Perfection Bakery, Rudy McKenna speaking. It's Rudy. OK, coming. Hello? I'll be right home.
I'm sorry I lost your fishing pole, too. Oh, I loved you. Well, the bandages are off my arm. It itches. I wish they'd scratch it. What happens now? Yes, we can remove the sutures. Let's disinfect. I wish they'd get this stuff off my face so I can see what they're doing. Sorry, sir. Another? pinching me. No. It's more like a, a, a little stab of heat. Wait a minute. I know. It's just like when I ran into the barbed wire fence and cut my eyebrow. They sew you up and then it heals and then they take the stitches out. Only, only this is different. I, I can feel what they're doing to my arm, but I can't feel the end of my arm at all. The nearest thing to the end of my arm is the heel of my hand. But the heel of my hand end of my arm. It's too high. It's high as my Good. shoulder. You've cut the off my arm. Are opposed. My arm. Remove the oh rest. Oh, my God, why did you do then a thing like that? I need that arm. Oh, I've got to work with it. I. You can't go around cutting a man's arm off like you were pruning dead branches off a tree. Well, there's a law or something. You've got to get his consent before you do a thing like that. He's got to sign a paper because a man with only one arm is a cripple and, and, and all he can do is go around selling pencils. Oh, no, not my other arm, too. No, no, please, no. You've already taken one of my arms. Don't take my to other the least one, conspicuous too. Room you can not find. both of them. Please don't. Good. Oh, I won't have any... The room with the lock. Something over the window no so arms. they can't peer in at him. No arms, no There isn't arms. a decent unoccupied room no in the building. Arms. Utility room, supply room, storeroom, anything. He can't tell the difference. Put someone in here who can. There's a game out there, and the stakes are high. And the guy who runs it figures the average is all day long and all night long. Once in a while, he lets you steal a pot. But if you stay in the game long enough, you've got to lose. And once you've lost, there's no way back. No way at all. Hit me. Pay 20. Christ, they sure could do the shot of whiskey. Help yourself. That's down. How'd you learn that? I used to do it at weddings. Hey, can you do card tricks too? Sure. Cards to the gamblers. Hit me. I'm just fine. Boy, I'm just fine. Hit me. Stan. <laughs> Hit me, but not too hard. Now watch him get 21. Pay 21. It's a funny thing. I can do almost everything but hit a 12. 12 shouldn't be any harder to hit than a 13, should it? Shouldn't be, but it is. That's nothing but superstition. A 12 to hit is just the same as any other number above it. Only better. Don't let anybody tell you different. Assembly, what time is it anyhow? Three Christmases in 41 days. Time to go. If I don't make that train, I miss... I miss a date to be killed on the 27th of June at 4.30 a.m. in the morning. Not too good for my kid, huh? He's only a year, eight months, and smart as hell already. Sure wish I could see him when he was five. You'll see him when he's 50. And you'll still be 23. What the hell? We're all gonna be killed. That's what we're here for. He's already got his. 
And the big Swede here, he's gonna catch flu and die on shipboard. I'm gonna get buried in a trench cave-in and smother to death. <laughs> now isn't that a hell of a way to go? Jeez. All aboard! Next stop, New York, Atlantic Ocean, and a Paris, France. What's this guy doing here? He ain't gonna get killed. Leave him alone. He's all right. Come on, boys, on your feet. We've got to make that train. Are you going with us? Of course. I've got lots of trains to handle. Lots of dead men. So many dead men, you wouldn't believe it. Somebody, help me. Don't let them cut my legs off. Don't let them take my legs, too. Jesus. They just went ahead and chopped off everything. Of course, it's a lot cheaper to cut a leg off than fix it up. With the war going on, they haven't got much time. Everybody is tired. But what kind of doctor would cut a man down to what I am now and still let him live? Did they have a bet on? Were they showing off or something? Was it some kind of experiment? No. Nobody would do a thing like that to another man. Nobody could be such a butcher. My dear students, war has various meanings to various persons. To the scientist, war means that he is actually set free to accomplish his most brilliant and most imaginative enterprises. For example, in previous wars, each injury has resulted in a very serious loss to the taxpayers, the loss of a most expensively trained soldier, or fighting unit, as we call them now. However, in the next war, we shall be able to repair and deliver that same fighting unit to the front-line trenches in three weeks or even less. And all because of the radical new techniques which this young man has taught us. I'm having a nightmare that says I'm real. Wake me up, Mother, and tell me I'm not real. I don't know where you are, my son, or what troubles you. Try to remember that God is the only reality and that you are made in his image and likeness. And since you are the perfect reflection of God's reality, you are real. You're wrong, Mother. It's a dream. It's got to be. Everything else is true, but not this. No, I remember the real things, Mother. Even before we left Colorado and moved to Los Angeles. I remember everything. Ouch! You hurt yourself, son? Uh-uh. Let's see. Oh, honestly. Someday, those feet are gonna get so dirty, they'll never wash clean.
class at the YMCA, the way Daddy does. For behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day, in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude. See those rocks over there? A long time ago, they caught a hunting party of Ute Indians there. Know what they did? Rounded them up, tied rocks around their feet, and threw them in the lake. About where we are now. They, uh, fishing on this side of the lake's been good ever since. Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Those were the real things, Mother. What I am now is the dream. There is no more reality to the waking dream of mortal existence than there is to the dream we have in sleep. Reality is God, and the essence of God is love. That perfect love which banishes all fear and heals all wounds. Stop it! I don't want to hear any no more about God Prepare is love. Prepare an injection. Because if I do, I'll begin to hate him. When did him. you aspirate him last? 4.30. Gavage feeding? 2 o'clock and again at 4. No, no, don't put me under again. I've got to figure some way out of this mess. Father, I need help. I'm in terrible trouble and I need help. Father, did you hear me? Father? I hear you, son, but I got troubles of my own. Nothing I have in this world is really any good, you know. My house is small, my job is small. Salary is also small. <laughs> Son is small. So is my wife, and get right down to it, I'm no giant myself. Everything around me is small, inferior, except this fishing pole. I myself wind it every year with the best of silk thread. See this lacquer? It comes from China. No finer lacquer in the world. See those guides? Pure amber. Nobody in town has a fishing pole like this. Not even Mr. Latimer down at the bank. My life is so poor and shoddy that without this pole, I, I'd have nothing to set me apart from other men. Nothing to give me distinction, nothing at all. That's why I love it so much. Do you love it more than you love me? <laughs> of course I do. What is there about you that can give a man distinction? You're not unusual at all. Yes, I am, Father. How's that? I may not be unusual now, but I'm going to be. Of course you are. Going to make the world safe for democracy, aren't you? What is democracy? Well, I was never very clear on it myself. Like every other kind of government, it's got something to do with young men killing each other, I believe. Why don't old men kill each other? Well, the old men are needed to keep the home fires burning. Couldn't the young men do that just as well? 
Young men don't have homes. That's why they must go out and kill each other. When it comes my turn, will you want me to go? For democracy, any man would give his only begotten son. I would. I won't be here to stop it, Joe. Put your arms around me. I need their warmth to keep the chill of death away. I can't. Please. No! I guess it always comes down to that. Each man faces death by himself. Alone. From now on, it's a simple matter of good nursing care. I can always be reached at GHQ if anything develops. Let's try the mask. Thank God they're finally getting this stuff off my face. The air feels good, it feels cool. Pair seem to have healed well. What's this? You see? Works very well. Any questions? Good luck. It's better. It does let the air in. But I thought when they unbandaged my face, I'd be all healed. breathing tube. I thought when they took this stuff off my face, they'd take the tubes out too. But they didn't. I don't understand. Where's she going now? Oh yes, I know. I've still got my feeding tube. When am I going to be able to feed myself? When am I going to get well? Dinner's over. But it won't always be like this, will it? Now wait. Think for a minute. There's something funny here, something cool, something wet. This was just wrapped up one day and wrapped it, I could... No. No, please, I... Now get hold of yourself, Joe. Don't lose your head. Your jaws. You can't move your jaws. They don't work. You haven't got any. Well, take your tongue and rub it around inside your teeth like you were chasing a raspberry seed. I haven't got any tongue. I haven't got any teeth for it to feel. I haven't got anything here but a hole. How big is it? How, how high does it go? I don't panic. Think. The inside of the hole is, is wet. And the edges of the hole dry. Wet, dry. Yes, that's it. Now feel out where it's dry. Feel. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm feeling the dry edges of the hole go up, up. No eyes. I, I haven't got any eyes or mouth or teeth, or tongue or nose. I haven't got anything but my whole face is scooped out. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's me and I'm alive. Oh, no, it can't be. Not me. I, I can't live like this. I, I can't. Please, no, I can't. I can't. Help me. Somebody please help me. Mother, where are you? Help me, Mother. I'm having a nightmare and I can't wake up. If you don't wake me up, I'll be like this for years. And years. And years. Pray for me, please. Please pray for me. 
to all those in the armed forces who sacrifice their young lives in this just and holy war for everlasting peace. I grant absolution of all their sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. place like this, you've got to think in order to keep from thinking. There are eight planets, Earth, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Mercury. What's that? There's something chewing on my forehead. It's a rat. It's one of those great big fat trench rats. Help me somebody kill it. Couldn't be a rat. They wouldn't let rats run around chewing up the customers in a place like this. It's a dream. No, it isn't. It is a rat. It's crawling. It's crawling. No. No, 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 no. Don't. Don't let it get me. No. No, 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 no. He's close. He's on my chest. Don't let him scare him. still and he won't where did it go did somebody kill it or did it just go away what if it comes back it was a dream it had to be but how can you tell what's a dream and what's real when you can't even tell when you're awake and when you're asleep or maybe the rat's real and the nurse here is a dream Oh, Jesus Christ, how can I ever be able to tell the difference? The thing to do is yell. Sometimes, even now, I have this old dream that somebody wants to kill me, and my mother and father are running away with me to Egypt. I hear the sound of soldiers riding at night, and the screams, and I yell. And the yell wakes me up. And then I know that it's a dream. So, what you have to do is yell. But you see, I can't yell can't even whisper. Well, whispering wouldn't help anyhow. Another way is just to tell yourself, wait a minute here, this is a nightmare, and I have to wake up in order to stop it. Then just force your eyes open, and the dream will be gone. Oh, I can't open my eyes. I haven't got any. Well, that complicates things. Maybe the thing to do is police your mind before you go to sleep. Say to yourself, I'm going to sleep now, and I'm not going to have any nightmares. Could be done, you know, with practice. You feel yourself getting drowsy? I never feel drowsy. I haven't got anything to feel drowsy with. Nothing? Maybe we should take a different line of attack altogether. Let us begin by assuming that everything is a dream, which by and large it is. When we're awake, we have one kind of dream. When we're asleep, we have another. The difference is that we control our daydreams, and the dream that comes at night controls us. Now think about that. When you dream that the rat is there, do you control the dream? Or does the dream control you? It controls me. Yes, exactly. If the rat were really there, you'd knock it off, wouldn't you? 
Of course. So the fact that you don't knock it off proves that it really is a dream. Yes. Yes, I... No, it doesn't work. Even if the rat was real, I couldn't knock it off because I haven't got any arms. No arms. I haven't got anything. I'm just like a piece of meat that keeps on living. Since your real life is a greater nightmare than your dreams, it would be cruel to pretend that anyone could help you. What you need is a miracle. No, not a miracle. Just tell me that the rat is real, and the way I am now is the dream. Perhaps it would be better for you to go away now. You're a very unlucky young man, and sometimes it rubs off. I'll go, but first tell me just one thing. Are you and I really here together? Or is this a dream, too? It's a dream. How do you know? Because I'm a dream. I don't believe you. Nobody does. <laughs> That's why I'm as unreal as every other dream that didn't come true. I don't know whether I'm alive and dreaming or dead and remembering. Am I getting old? Is my hair turning gray? Will anybody ever come to visit me? I hope not. I really wouldn't want anybody to see me like this. I do get homesick, though. But they wouldn't have shipped me that long way home, not with all these tubes and things in me. No, I'm probably in some frog hospital. Or maybe Limey. At least my teeth don't ache. Wait a minute, what's this? There are two vibrations and one of them is heavy. It's a man. Why are the shutters closed? They always have been. At least as long as I've been here. It's on the order sheet. Well, it's crazy. Well, what are you doing? Hello, have I got visitors? What happened then? As long as I'm head nurse of this ward, the shutters are open and they will stay. Let him have a little sunshine. They said it was to keep people from peeking in at him. It would take a man seven feet tall to peek through that window. Oh, and another thing. I want sheets on this bed. He's walking. No more blankets. He can't really tell the difference. You now know. he stopped. I can. Well, how did the triage officer ever overlook this one? He's looking at me. Poor baby. No, it's a woman. Those hands, a fat woman. That's why I could feel her footsteps so plain. Poor, poor baby. Come on. Funny. What were they doing? What has happened? What's different? Now think, Joe. Now think. Use your head. Feel. Feel with your scalp and the skin on your forehead. Something has changed. It was cooler before she came in there than it is now. What I feel is, is warmth. Where does it come from? Yes. Yes, 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 of course. Oh, my God, I see it now. It, it's the sun. have anything else, I'll always have dawn and morning sunlight. It's night. If a man can tell the difference between day and night, he's beginning to tell time. It's warm again. It's morning and she's changing my sheets. Now it's night. Morning again. She's bathing me. One morning she changes me, the next morning she bathes me. Night, night, day, night.
How will I keep track? I know. Put a big blackboard up in your mind. And right here in the middle, put a mark for each day. Four, six, seven days. Now put a mark up in this corner for the weeks. Erase the days and start over again. Three, four weeks. That's right. Erase the weeks and mark down a month over here. Five, nine, eleven, twelve months. No, that isn't a year. Not yet. Four twelves is only forty-eight. Okay, check off four more weeks very carefully. And then put Roman numeral number one right down here. One year. I'm ringing bells. Hey, I'm blowing horns and shooting off firecrackers. Everybody's singing, should old acquaintance be forgot? And I'm saying, I'm saying Happy New Year, Kareem. And I'm kissing her. But it isn't New Year's Day out there. Sure, I've counted a year, but a year from when? I don't even know how old I am. All I know is I'm 20 years old, plus X years since I got blown up, plus the year I just counted. But when did those X years begin? Think, Joe. Think back. We were next to an English regiment, and we went out on night patrol and scattered. And then I hooked up with that little limey corporal in his outfit, and yes, I remember now. I was writing a letter to you, Kareem. Corporal Timnon! Yes, sir? What is that damnable odor? Out there, sir. This fat hun came stumbling through the fog. Some bloke lost his head and popped him off. The stink ain't half so bad when they're close to the ground, sir, but he's got himself hung up on the wire. Bad for morale. Extremely bad. He's a Bavarian, sir. They always smell worse. Yes, they do, don't they? Not so bad as Hindus, though. Or Welshmen. When it's nice and quiet, sir, we keep on trying to shoot him down, but he hangs on pretty good. You will take a detail out tonight, Corporal, and bury him. Oh, but it's kind of busy out there, sir, even at night. And don't forget, Corporal, death has a dignity all its own. And you will say a few words of prayer over the remains? Yes. Oh, gee, that. Just for that, I'll take volunteers. You, 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 you two, you in the back there. Unto almighty God, we commend the soul of our brother departed, and we commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Who's got the dust? It's kind of wet, but I have. Well, throw the bloody stuff in. Go on. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Are they mercy on his soul? The bloody bastards have shot me in the arse. Take cover, men. If it's prayers he wants, he can make up his own. Or Bavarian either. For all I know, we might have been friends. Instead of him dead, out there in the mud, and me lying here like, like some freak in a carnival show. Remember that time in Los Angeles when we all went to the circus and took Green with us too? And when we got home, the old man began imitating those sideshow barkers. And then the rest of us joined in, too. He was a funny man. Just think what he could have done with me, the way I am now. I eat through a tube. He breathes through a tube. And whatever goes in a tube 
has to come out through it. He is the armless, legless wonder of the 20th century. And yet, by God, he's just as alive as you and he. He was a good boy. <laughs> he was always forgetting things. And it's this fellow right here. Why, he don't worry about no shoes. Because he don't need no shoes. He'd forget his overshoes. No shoes. No shirt. No socks. No gloves. No hat. He would forget his cap. No necktie, no collar buttons. No vest, no coat, no nut. And now, he's forgotten just everything. All you gotta do is drop a love offering of 15 cents or more in this little lady's thunder mug. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lift the lid of this box here, and I'm gonna let you look at the face of the only man in the world who don't give a damn about anything. <laughs> you remember? It only cost you 15 cents. And if this guy looks back at you, by golly, I'll give you a $5 bill. <laughs> All right, bring on the music, Rollo boy. Okay, step right up. Step right up, folks. Step right up. Hurry, 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 hurry. Get a close look at the man who Thank can. Thank you. Or maybe he can. Maybe you get that part. Thank you. Thank you. What's this? A different nurse? Why does she walk without vibrations? Is she tiptoeing? Or, or is she just little? Something wet, what was it? She must be new. She is new, her hands are soft like Corrine's. She's a girl and I don't make her sick. She isn't afraid of me. Hello, new nurse. Hello, new beautiful young nurse. Hello out there.
Why did you bring me to a place like this? I didn't. I heard you calling. I called, and I called, and you never came. I was held up. How late am I? How long have I been away? I don't know. It may have been forever, though. I can't remember. Oh, try, Corrine. Please try. You see, I don't know how long I've been here. I don't know what year I'm in. And I'm trying to get back into... into time. I don't pay much attention to time anymore. Oh, you must. All I think about is time. Time is what makes people old. The way I am, Corrine. The way it is with me, you'll never grow old. Because I keep you right here in my mind. And in my heart. Just the way you were when I saw you last. So you see, with me, you can't get old. Your hair will always stay brown. Your skin will always be fresh like rain. I won't let one little wrinkle mark your face. I'll keep you beside me young and beautiful forever. Because of all the people in the world, only with me will you be safe. Like a rose. I'm not. I'm not. Nobody loves me anymore. Oh, I do, Corrine. <laughs> Stop that. What happened to you? You told me you know how to treat her. Then you got her pregnant, went away, and stopped writing to her. I didn't know. I, I couldn't write. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye. She's moving me. Yes. Oh, into the sunlight. Now she's in back of me. That tube. I never did understand that one. Now my table. What else?
wonder if she's an American. I hope so. I've only seen one American girl since I left home. <laughs> I'm as American as apple pie. <laughs> I was born in San Francisco. Didn't I tell you? I was there when the earthquake hit in 1906. Believe me, that was a shake. I was up on the fourth floor of a hotel on a Market Street entertaining a gentleman friend. And when I first heard that thing hit, I said to myself, I said, Lucky, I said, that's an earthquake. And you ain't going to be caught dead with no fat son of a bitch on top of you like this. Do you know what I did? I pushed him off and ran stark naked down the street, and you should have seen the guy stare. I'll bet. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> you aren't wanting to do anything now, I guess, huh? Uh, too tired. That's what that French cognac will do to you. It'll be two dollars just the same. What are you knitting there? Sweater for my kid. He's only five years old and the sweetest little bastard you ever saw. Hmm, where is he? Oh, I keep him in a school on Long Island. That's in New York. A private school. They got lots of polo players there. And that's what I want him to be when he grows up. Once you're a polo player, you meet all the best people. Did you know that? You sleep? No. Must uh, cost you a lot of money to school like that. Oh, sure it does. But I don't do too bad here. Well, I make about a hundred bucks a week. Of course, you got to dress up to your position, and that takes money.
Hi, Mr. Bonham. Phil hasn't got a pole, and he's only here for the afternoon. And I thought maybe he could borrow yours. We could borrow yours. Oh. Uh, sure. Hey, but, uh, give Bill your pole and you take mine. Oh, sure. We'll be back before dark. Thank you, Mr. Bonham. Yeah. I lost your pole today, Father. We got a quick strike, and before we knew your pole was in the water. And then we hunted around for it and fished with yours, but... but we couldn't find it, so it's gone. trip together, should we? No. Go on ahead. Catch us a ride into town. I won't be long. Hello? Is it you? The one I love? Yes. What's this? What are you doing? One up, one down, one up, one down again. Oh, God, no. It can't be, it can't. Talking to me out there? Are you saying something to me? 
Are you drawing a letter on my skin and then erasing it? A word? You are, you are, you are, yes, you are. It's the letter M. Yes, oh, God bless you, nurse. I've got it, M. Christmases, I can tell when it's spring. I can tell when it's summer. I can smell leaves burning in autumn. Oh, Merry Christmas, sweet nurse. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas and all my love. Merry, merry, merry Christmas. Due to 
the war emergency, our little holiday will end in just three more minutes. But the ovens are hot, and we must keep the home fires burning. Let us sing. Keep the home fires burning. While our hearts are yearning, though your lands are far away, they dream of home. They Want some honey? No, thanks. Sit down. Goodbye, Joe. Who was that girl? I really don't know. I was fishing, jabbing by, wriggled into my arms and stayed there. So many young girls these days seem to be hunting for a place in old men's arms. Where did all the young men go? They drift away. How is it with you, Father? It's all right. You know, it's a funny thing. I was a very good shoe clerk, but I was more than that. I could handle a horse. If I had a cow, she was always healthy, gave plenty of milk. Raised our own food on two city lots. <laughs> Even up to the honey, our biscuits. <laughs> I could uh, hoe a pretty good row, lay out a pretty good grade on an uphill road, build a house. But I never did learn how to make any money. The goddamnedest thing I ever ran into. <sighs> See, the trouble with life is you worry so much you don't enjoy it. better this way, except I do miss your mother. How is she? I haven't seen her lately. Oh. Well, not too long to sunrise. I have to go. Trout will be rising. Willow Lake. Now they got my pole back, I don't want to miss him. <laughs> Goodbye, Father. Give my love to your mother when you see her. Sorry I had to leave you in the lurch, but it was the only way, believe me. Goodbye. Why? 
Why couldn't you? I can't tell you. That's all. I can't. You don't love me, Joe. <laughs> I do love you. <laughs> I do love you. No, you don't, Joe. You never did. Don't go, Kareem. <laughs> Where are you? Are we, are we out and free? Don't go away from me again. <laughs> Help, son. There isn't any help. Have you asked for any? I can't. I can't ask for anything. There is no way I can talk to them. Then why don't you send a telegram? Telegram. Don't you remember when you were little? How you and Bill Harper used to string a wire between the two houses so you could telegraph to each other? Yes. Still remember the Morse code? Yes. What good is that? How can I tap out a message to them? You've got to learn to think. Use your head. Yes. Yes. My head. My head. My head. My head. Yes. Yes. My head. Where is she going? Captain? Yes? Could you come here a minute, please? Yes, of course. Would you take care of that nurse? Thank you. She's brought somebody in. I can't understand what he's doing. Can I see the orders, please? Yes. Probably an early entry. If bodily action becomes violent or persistently repetitive, and these movements are persistently repetitive, they must be treated as reflexive muscular spasms, which is to say, by sedation. Clear enough, we'll prepare an injection. Why is she trying to stop me? I don't believe that the movement is reflexive. No, you don't. Well, General Tillery will pass through on the 23rd with his annual staff inspection. If you don't trust me, nurse, perhaps you'd better take it up with him. I will. Well, that's excellent, nurse. Because General Tillery is the chief operating surgeon who wrote those orders. No, no. Don't give me dough. Don't put me under again. Would you unlock the door, please? I'm trying to talk to you. Oh, God. Please make them hear me. All I'm asking is for you to take one little idea that's in my mind and put it into their minds, maybe only two or three feet away from me. It's, it's such a little thing to ask. But they won't listen. They won't hear me. All they do is give me dope, and I go down, 
and down and oh there you are brothers what were you hunting when they caught you look father i found your fishing pole Use your head, son. I am, Father. I am. Hear me. Please try to understand what I'm doing and hear me. She did hear me. She's going to get somebody. She didn't even close the door. I've broken through. I'm back with people again. Hello, all you people out there. It's me. And we're going to talk to each other. They're here, a lot of them. Morse code. For what? SOS. Help. Do you mean to say that this man is actually speaking to us? What are they doing? Yes, sir. Decerebrated, General. Completely decerebrated. What are they waiting for? What's happening? Are they leaving? No. Just one of them. Or maybe two. No, just one. Ask what he wants. How can I ask a man like this a question like that? By asking it. How else can we help him? Why don't they do something? They are. What? Do. You. Want. I want to feel fresh air against my skin. I want to feel people around me. No. It would cost too much money taking care of me on the outside. They never do that. But, but maybe there's a way I can take care of myself. Yes, there is a way. All you have to do is put me on display and people will pay to see me. Lots of people. Put me in a fancy coffin with windows in it and take me out where people are spending money and having fun. Take me to the beaches and the county fairs and the 4th of July celebrations and all the church bazaars. They've seen the pinheaded girl from Timbuktu and the dog-faced man who crawls on his belly like a reptile, but they're not real freaks. They were born that way. They were made that way by God. But this thing here in his fancy coffin was made by people, by you and me and the lady next door, and that takes a lot of planning and costs a lot of money. Advertise me as the only piece of meat in the world that can talk through the back of its head. And if that doesn't pull him in, then, 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 then bill me as the last man on earth who joined the army because the army makes men. So rally around the flag, boys, your flag, their flag, anybody's flag, because the flag needs soldiers and the army makes men. I want out so people can See what I am. Put me in a ca carnival show where they can look at me 
Who that? Me out. Well, what could we have expected? Tell him, uh, tell him we'll do everything we can, but uh, his condition won't permit him to be moved. For the present, that is. Uh, be sure to say, for the present. If you won't let people see me, then kill me. He's upset, understandably so. Ask him what his name is. These shutters are to be closed at all times. What's he saying? He says, kill me. Over and over again, kill me. Tell him we'll do everything we can to make him comfortable. For now, he needs rest. Tell him we'll give him a sedative and come back later. And try to get his name. You're not to mention what has happened here to anyone. I'll hold you collectively responsible for any breach. If new orders are received in view of the new situation which has developed, you'll be notified. Well? He won't wait for an answer. All he says is, kill me, kill me, kill me. Don't you have some message for him, Padre? You could at least tell him to put his faith in God, couldn't you? I'll pray for him for the rest of my days. But I will not risk testing his faith against your stupidity. Well, you're a hell of a priest, aren't you? He's the product of your profession. Not mine. Clear the room. Give him a light sedative, nurse. They're going away. Why? Why don't they get it over with and kill me? But you're still here. Can't you see what I'm tapping to you? I'm asking you to kill me. Please do. sorry for having offended thee and I detest all my sins not because of thy judgment O Lord but because thou art all good and deserving of all my love I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to sin no more, to avoid all the occasions of sin. Amen. Oh, nurse, beautiful, beautiful nurse. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear God, thank her for me. Be sweet to her, God. Make her happy. Make her beautiful. Make everything she wants come true. Make everyone love her. No. No. 
Leave the room. Oh, somebody stopped her. Why? I said, leave the room. Give me the key. What's happening? The key. Go on. She's going. Feel her moving toward the door. He's sending her away. Why? First they close the shutters and now they're sending her away. Why did they close the shutters? Why is he sending her away? Why won't they let me talk? Because I'm a secret or something? Oh, I don't know. She's gone. Goodbye, nurse. You're gone. And I'm a secret. Oh, no, not that again. I... I thought they'd be glad that I found a way to to talk to them, but they're not. The only thing on this earth I'm any good for, they won't let me do. All they want is to push me back into the darkness down here, so they won't ever see me again. He's gone too. Well, now I know. They'll never let me out. They'll keep me a secret here until some day when I'm an old, old man. I'll sneak away from them and die. It isn't easy, though. Inside me, I'm screaming and yelling and howling like a trapped animal. Nobody pays any attention. If I had arms, I could kill myself. If I had legs, I could run away. If I had a voice, I could talk and be some kind of company for myself. I could yell for help. But nobody would help me. Not even God, because there isn't any God. Couldn't be in a place like this. And, uh, and yet, I've just got to do something, because I, I don't see how I can go on like this much longer. me.